Hello, Yeshua Network. Nathan Wheeler here with day 26 of our 40-day holiness challenge. Uh, you may also want to think of it as a sinless challenge. Yes, we come together every single morning, normally at 10 a.m. California time, but I'm going to be traveling to D.C. for a meetup for the next few days, so the videos are going to be earlier. Uh, but we come together and we edify, we strengthen, we speak love and hope and encouragement into one another, and we read scripture together as we all strive to remove more and more of ourselves, that there may be more and more of Christ who lives in us, that we may stalk ourselves like lions, uh, watching our every action and even our every thought, seeing where it is that we are doing or thinking things that are unpleasing to the Lord. So that's what this 40-day challenge is. It is a fellowship and it is a body of Christ coming together to encourage one another. So we hope that you will participate in it. We hope that you will join us. Uh, the link to the very first video, the playlist, is in the description of this video. Click that link at the top of the description and it will take you to the entire playlist. And that way you can start at the beginning. And uh, I will tell you, I testify, this will change your life. It will actually really authentically change your life and your relationship with Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So today is early. I apologize for those who are unable to log on and participate in it. So if you're watching this recorded, uh, I love you guys. And I know you're with me in spirit in, in, uh, in the time that this receives you. The Lord is not restricted by time. So uh, today, if you're wondering, I am going. I'm flying to the D.C. area so that we can have our meetup this weekend. I'm very excited about that. And if you guys don't know, we do have meetups that we do every month here at Yeshua Network, meeting and praying together, breaking bread together, fellowshipping. We do baptisms if anybody wants it, all that kind of stuff. So um, that next one is in Boise, Idaho, July 24th through 25th. You can look at the top of the page of facebook.com forward slash Yeshua official, and you will see the link to RSVP to our events coming up. And by the way, they are 100% free. There's no ticket sales or anything like that associated with our meetups. Amen. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and pray. We want to kick off every video with a prayer. Ask the Holy Ghost and the Lord to be with us, obviously, and uh, and to guide us. So let's, uh, let's lift this day up to the Lord. Amen. Almighty Jehovah, we lift up this day, we lift up this video, we lift up this fellowship, we lift up this entire ministry. We also lift up our minds and our hearts and our members to you in the name above all names, Yeshua HaMashiach. We ask, Lord, that you would receive us, that we would be in you and you in us, that we would be washed clean by the blood of the Lamb, that you would see us as you see him, flawless, that we may be vessels to carry your Holy Spirit in us that we may go into this day, not as ourselves, but maybe even for the first time in our existence, we go forth into the world as a true servant of the Lord. We give up our thoughts and our actions, our moments, our breath. And we say to you, Lord, you take this. You take this very moment, this moment to moment day, and you, and you use it for your will. You use it for your glory. You use it to bless your sheep, and to build your kingdom. Lord, I pray that this video today is a blessing unto my brothers and sisters, that it feeds them, that it strengthens them, that it burns off the enemy's lies and poles of the temptation and the, and, the, and the systems of the world that are trying to entrap us. Sin is a killer, and you are a life giver. I ask for you, Lord, to be our master today in every single way, utterly. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, put a hedge around all my brothers and sisters. For those who are having pain or struggles in their life, I ask that you would reach your hand down right now as they're watching this video, no matter when that is, and that you would lessen that pain, that you would lighten that load that they carry or the burden that they carry, and that you would let them know that they are your children and you are their father. In Yeshua HaMashiach's name, Lord, by your will, may this be done. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's get to some scripture reading, shall we? I'm excited. I love Yeshua. Okay, here we go. Hallelujah. All right. Over the next couple days, we're going to be focusing on a very specific thing during this, this challenge. Something that I think is part of our, our transformation. And that is the promises of Yeshua. We've mentioned in the last few videos about how we need to truly trust and truly believe that the scriptures are telling the truth. 
We need to actually believe that they are also for us because we believe them. By us simply believing them, we need to believe, as we read yesterday, that that means it refers to us. Without the belief, it doesn't refer to us. But because we do believe, it does refer to us. I know, kind of silly statement, but the devil doesn't want to hear that, right? So it is true. So over the next couple days, uh, I really want to focus on the promises specifically of Yeshua HaMashiach, what he said and what he promised us, and then what it is that will be the result of these promises he gave us. So starting off today, we're doing John 10.10. 10. We talked about how there's the king of sin, and there is the king of goodness and holiness and righteousness, which is obviously Jehovah, and we also know who the evil king of sin and lies is. And I, I know you know this passage, but it is such a good one that after 26 days of walking in the holy righteous path and, and, and burning off the dross and circumcising the heart, um, you read this and I believe once again, it might have a deeper meaning to you. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Only. He does not come to give you joy and happiness and elation, which are the things he's selling. But when you get to his table and you eat from his table and you dance in his palace, he steals and he kills and he destroys. Not just you, but your life and the things around you. She says, I came so that they would have life and have it more abundantly. He does the exact opposite. He gives us things we don't deserve and he gives us things that will never tarnish or never fall away. And he is a good, good king. John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. This confirms everything we've been talking about so far. You were never able to do what is righteous or good. You were never able to turn your chin and look to the good king. At any point, he had to do it for you because you cannot do anything good without him. So therefore, even the turning of the head and looking and seeing that the good king is there and acknowledging the cross and acknowledging his promises, this is something he had to do in you. So you cannot allow the devil to continue to steal, kill, and destroy you in your thoughts, in your hearts, as he tells you you're never going to be good enough. You're never going to be holy enough. You aren't worthy to be the one who receives the, the gift of the cross. You are not worthy God would not love you. Look at your heart, look at your thoughts, look at how dark and lost you are. Christ says, before I was in you, you could never do anything good. So he's telling us the very truth that we're ex experiencing, but the devil's leaving out the part that when Christ comes in, we will be attached to the vine, we will be branches, he will remain in us and we will remain in him. I love that it's a two-way street. I love that it is he consumes our, us internally and he surrounds us completely. That we will be in him. So he'll surround us completely and he will be in us. Basically, there is no gap. On the very outside of us is Jehovah and on the very full fullness busting out of us is Jehovah. He wants to make sure that we understand that he doesn't just protect one part of us. He doesn't just fill one part of us, one of our types of experiences of life. We love to say that we are spiritual beings having an earthly or we are spiritual beings having an earthly experience, right? That's a very famous, you know, saying in the world. But he tells us very clearly, if you remain in me and I in you, and on, in the totality of all that we can experience, that includes even our flesh experience, ladies and gentlemen. This is the part that some of us have yet to truly uh, understand is one of the fruits of walking with Jehovah. Our flesh will no longer hurt with the desire of sin, but our flesh will turn and it will become grotesque by even the thought of sin. It will, it will, it will just revolt, it will be revolting to think of sin. 
right? So he will be even in our flesh. And this is a hard thing to really fathom because we think to ourselves, isn't flesh in of itself sinful? And the answer is yes. But when he comes into us, he does fill our cells. He does fill our flesh and he will make our flesh revolted by sin. This is the maturing of our faith. Does this make sense? If you remain in me and I in you, some of us believe that it's only a filling. Some of us think it's only an outside kind of warm and tingly and I got brothers and sisters, but it's a total encompassing of our existence. How do we know? You will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. I came, John 10, 10. I came so that they would have life and have it more abundantly. All of life. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, what's going to be the fruit? I know you guys know this passage, but I really want you to take a listen to it this time. 26 days in. I know you know these passages. I know you've heard them a thousand times. These are very famous, these three. But I really want you to listen to it this time as you've walked 26 days with the Lord. But the fruit of the Spirit, the things that you will have when you actually walk through the fire, when you actually are grafted onto Him, that He is the source of your livelihood, the source of your breath in your lungs, the source of the pump in your heart, when you have truly surrendered moment to moment to moment of Him, then that means He will be in you moment to moment, and you will be in Him moment to moment. You'll be surrounded by Him moment to moment, and you will have a life that is so much more abundant that you will not be able to comprehend it. You will not be able to look to earthly examples other than maybe drowning in an ocean. That's a very famous one. It will feel like you are drowning in his goodness. We have to use a negative analogy and the largest thing on earth minus rock, I guess. And we have to use that as the only analogy we have to make it even remotely possible for anybody to understand what it means when we have him filling us with life more abundantly, when we are living with him and for him moment to moment to moment. But when we do and we are drowning in his goodness, when we are surrounded and utterly unescapable from his goodness, right? We're unable to escape from his goodness. These are the things that you will gain by it. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these things there is no law. Against these things, there is no law. There is nowhere in all of creation where God speaks against any of these things. These are things that are from God himself. These are characteristics from God himself. You having God inside of you, living inside of you, surrounding you with his very own perfect, utter, powerful, creating everything spirit. You have all of his qualities around you and you get to experience them all, all the time and at any given time. This is a promise of Yeshua. This is a promise. He cannot lie. He would never lie. This is the thing he died on the cross to give you. And I know you guys get this, but really think about it. Take a look at the things that are hurting you. Take a look at the things that are being burnt off in the fire of refinement. Take a look at really the things that, that we have grown attached to in this world and the things that we fight with in this world are any of them these things. But are not these the things that deep down, deep in our soul truly we seek for? Love, not just love from another, but love for ourselves. Joy, real joy that, that doesn't get washed away by some moment of an idiot in our life or a bad person or a, a finger on the freeway <laughs> pointed in our direction or, or a curse word thrown out of a window. Peace, 
You ever had a moment of real peace, of real serenity, peace with him, as we talked about the peace treaty, forbearance? I gotta be honest, I think I know what that word means, but I do not wanna falsely teach it. So why don't I just look up the definition real quick. Forbearance, I'm going to guess it means like steadfastness, like you stick with it. Patience, self-control, restraint, tolerance. Pretty good, taking action. It's an active thing, forbearance. So if right now you think I can't do this, you're thinking to yourself, as I do this struggle, I'm hurting and my flesh is craving and my spirit is wanting these, these things of the world. Well, one of the things that you will gain by surrendering moment to moment to moment is you're going to increase in forbearance. You're going to increase in the ability to refrain from sin. You're going to increase in the ability to seek after him more accurately, more consistently. So it's literally, you're gonna get better at getting better. Isn't that amazing? It's a promise, forbearance. You're gonna get better at walking with him. You're gonna get better at surrendering to him. It's a promise, it's one of the fruits. Kindness, whoo, receiving kindness, giving away kindness, Man, that's a, that's a, when, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like kindness is really lacking in the world, but I have noticed that when I give it away as freely as he gives it to me, I see it a lot in the world. The world is full of kindness and it's full of the next one, which is goodness. Nothing is good except for God, but we will get to experience goodness when we have him in us. Goodness. What is good? Things that are not broken. Things that don't have any junk in them, no anxiety, no pain, no suffering, no jealousy, no greed, no envy. Goodness is things that are, are free from all the lacking, are free from all the, yeah, the lacking of life. I mean, it, it, when we, there's no, there's nothing in goodness that wants more. There is nothing in goodness that says, but this is missing. Only God is good because only in God is he perfect. Only in God is he complete, right? Remember the passage at the beginning of this challenge? Be complete, be holy as your father is holy. Be perfect as your father is holy is the passage. Do you remember that passage? And the word in Latin is complete. Only God is complete. Goodness is complete. It lacks nothing, nothing, not a single drop of anything in the good realm, right? It's perfect. Faithfulness. Well, that's interesting. Some of us feel like our faith is very weak. Our faith is almost not even there. Some of us feel as though the very thing we're struggling with the most is believing in the promises. Believing that this cross has anything to do with me. Has b believing that the cross and the resurrection and, the, and, and, and all the supernatural things that we hear Nathan and everybody else on the internet often talking about, I don't know if they're really, really real. I don't know if it's really like that. I don't know if I'm gonna wake up one day and be like, oh my gosh, there it is, I'm experiencing it and I have no doubt about it that this is it. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is a gift. Faith is a gift. Faithfulness, being faithful, staying faithful, perseverance, staying right with God, walking right with God, keeping your steps in line with God, that is something that will also increase we grow in these things, ladies and gentlemen. We are children. He says, unless you become like one of these little ones, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. We as adults have a very hard time going back to ground zero. We have a very hard, listen, I've lived blank amount of years in this world. I have suffered blank amount of things. I have studied blank amount of years. I have done blank amount of things. I have achieved blank amount of achievements. I am not going back to being a toddler. But unless you become like one of these little ones, if you do not become children in God, starting over in Him, understanding you need to start at page one, word one, with Him, and then grow from there. You have to let the process happen. You're not going to skip from a PhD in the world to a PhD in walking with God. It doesn't work that way. You must turn into a child unless you become, notice the word become. He doesn't say you are. 
you must understand that you must surrender onto me, your father, as if you were a child. You must become a new child. You must become a baby in me and you must allow me, your father, to grow you in truth. We as adults do not want to start over. Why? Because we are prideful, arrogant, pompous, tired, pain-filled, unforgiving, self-protecting beings. That's what we are. So when we surrender and say, okay, Lord, for you, for this, for these fruits, I will become a child again. I will acknowledge I have absolutely no idea what's about to happen with my walk with you. I have no idea what new thing, as you said, is going to part, part, is going to manifest. You said I've start, I've done a new thing. This is going to be a new thing. It is finished. A new thing is being created. I have no idea what this experience is, is going to be. I don't really know what it's like to really, really walk really, really with you. Okay. I surrender. I surrender that I don't know. I surrender I don't know everything. I surrender that I'm not the perfect Christian that maybe I thought that I was or I know that I should be at this age. I will become a child again. And I surrender that to you. Start your process in me. Start teaching me day one. Bring me to the simplicities. Bring me to the simples. Bring me to the first. The first of your teachings. And by the way, in case you're wondering what the first is that God is going to teach you, Repentance, obviously, that brings you, that's humility, but that brings you into his first fruit. And the first one on the list always is love. Love. The very first thing that God is going to teach you about as you begin to surrender and as you begin to let go of yourself and let go of your, I'm an adult, I have a PhD, I've lived this many years, I know a lot of things, I've achieved a lot of things, I've taught a lot of things. The first thing you're going to learn once you humble yourself is you're going to learn about his love. And then everything else is a fruit from that branch. Gentleness. To have gentleness when somebody makes you angry. Gentleness is not only a thing that we will be demonstrated, we will be given from the get-go. But the ability to be gentle onto others who are not gentle with us. Strong, but gentle. There's a difference between being strong and, and you know crushing like the Hulk you can be strong and still be gentle as our father is he is obviously stronger than anything we can measure I mean not even the earth or a black hole in the universe can stand his strength right or withstand his strength or or, or go above his strength so he is definitely strong but he is unbelievably gentle and that really comes into also the final one which is self-control and I like that self-control is last on the list. You know why I really like that self-control is last on the list? Because I believe it's the one that we will work to and work in and work for until the day we die. I believe that since this is a process of surrender and we are perpetually growing forever, every second, every day, even if we surrender moment to moment to moment and we get good at surrendering moment to moment to moment, guess what? We're going to get better at it. We're going to get better at what it means to surrender. So we may surrender right now at, let's say, a level one. Oh, sure, I'm surrendering to the Lord. There's no doubt about that. But how much deeper can my surrender go? How much more full how much more complete surrender can I continue to give to the Lord? I like that this is the last one on the list because I feel that this is the one that, of course, we're always going to be perpetually growing in love. But I feel that the final flesh fight, if you will, will always be self-control because there's always more of us to let go. And the more of us we let go, the more of Jehovah we get. And this is a fun little fact, by the way. You know that the apostles walked three years with Yeshua before he died on the cross and rose again, right? And you know that when Paul got called to be an apostle, he went and he studied everything he could learn about Yeshua. And he even went and he met with the apostles for three years before he allowed himself to walk in the footsteps of what God called him, right? So God called him to be uh, an apostle. 
and to bring the, the, the gospel to the Gentiles. This was his apostleship. You are going to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. Of course, Paul also spoke to the Jews, but he, his goal, his, his anointing was bring the gospel to the Gentiles. And he also said, how can I do this if I don't study for three years? Because that is what the apostles had to do. They had to walk with Christ for three years before they were given the day of Pentecost. So the interesting thing here is John 15, 5, tying this all together. I am the vine and you are the branch. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You ready for this? This is kind of cool. I love the analogies here. Did you know that it takes three years for a grape to be for a grapevine to produce fruit? Three years. Is that pretty cool? At least that's what I've been told in the vineyard world. It takes three about three years for the first for the first fruits to really bear. And ironically enough, the apostles walked with the vine for three years before they really produced their real fruits. And Paul humbled himself and walked three years attached to the vine, soaking up the nutrients and the knowledge and the things he needed in his vine before he actually walked in his ministry. Nothing is a coincidence with God. I find that very fascinating. Thought I'd share that little fun fact with you today. Ephesians 1, 7 through 8, last one of the day. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavishes on us. I just want to remind you guys with this passage. This is one of those things that we, we've already, we've read another passage that's like it, right? That it's by him that we are washed clean. There's many passages where they're constantly telling us it's not by your good doings. It's not by your skill set, It's not by your knowledge. It's not by your power. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, our sins, our wrongdoings, our nature that goes against him. Remember, we see the billboard, then we go, I have to do the exact opposite of that. That's a trespass. We have broken the commandment to do right. And why does he bless us? It is according to the riches of his grace. His grace the thing that needed to be accomplished for you to have the promises of these fruits that we just read, the thing that needed to be accomplished so that you could be grafted onto the vine, so that you could experience and produce and give away freely, eternally, as free as he has given onto you and as eternally as he has given onto you, it has already been accomplished, my brothers and sisters. It wasn't something you did. It's not something you're going to do. He's already done it for you so that all you have to do is show up and take it. You understand? He already did all the work. He already plowed the field. He already reaped the field. He already put the field fruits in the storehouse. He already packaged them and put a little bow on it. He already sealed it with his stamp of approval and his God grade fruits, you know, so when you get it, you know, it's, God approve, what would it, FDA be like GDA, you know, be God instead of federal. You get what I'm saying? I'm such a dork. You get what I'm saying though. He's already done it. So all you have to do, all you have to do is get to his doorstep, knock on the door, let him open it, put your hands out and say, can I have it too, please? And he goes, yes. And he puts it right in your hand. And then you begin to walk with him as a child. You begin to grow with him as a child, as a newbie, starting over in life, but this time with a life more abundantly, a life filled with life, a life filled with blessings, a life filled with love. We're gonna go through this one time, I love this. Stuff. Love, joy, peace, 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 patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There's nothing on that list none of us don't truly and utterly desire. Hallelujah that he is a good father. He could have been a bad God. You know what I'm saying? Like he could have been. He could have been like one of those Egyptian gods or one of those gods in the Malayan, you know, Malaysia, whatever it's called, Mayans. They're like, kill me your child and bring it to me. 
I'm so grateful that we have Jehovah as the actual true living God, where he's like, listen, I'm not asking you to kill anything, you know, you know, to, to, to please me, right? Different for a temple sacrifice. That was for the Jews to clean up the mess, right? He's saying, I just want a relationship with you. You know what I'm saying? That's all he wants. And he's like, watch, I'm, I'm going to die. I'm going to come in flesh and I'm going to die a horrible death for you so that you don't have to do it for me. I love, I love my God. Just letting you know, I love my Jehovah. I really, 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 really do. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him, Holly. I really, really have begun to think about this one through this, this series, this 40, 40 day challenge. And to me, the thing that speaks out the most, this is me, I don't know what it speaks to you, but for me, the thing that speaks out the most about be still and know he is the Lord, when we are still is when we get the most attacked, I feel. Yes, we can find that that serenity at a park bench or an ocean shore or a lake you know, front or something like that. Like we can be in the in the in, in the nature and surrounding of God and we can walk through the, the forest and so on and so forth, and we can be blessed by it. But when we are when we are just being still and we're just trying to allow his voice to whisper to us, this is kind of the realest moment of truth, isn't it? This is what it, this is, what it is for me. It's kind of the realest moment of truth because it's when I have to sit with me. I'm not just sitting with Jehovah when I'm still, I'm sitting with me. And for me, the biggest struggle I've ever had with Jehovah, I don't know, not the rest of you guys, but for me, the biggest issue I've ever had with Jehovah was that I'm the one who has to have the relationship with him. It's not that I doubt Jehovah. It's not that I doubt that he can't make me walk on water if he wanted to, or he couldn't, uh, you know, call me to be used by him. It's me. I'm the broken piece to the relationship. It's me that I have to deal with. And when I am still, and I bring me to the moment, I'm like, you, you gotta be God to make this relationship work because only God can mend as broken of a thing as me, right? Only you can take the track record I have and make it clean. Only you can take the giant hole and pieces that are missing in me. And only you can play both your role and I'm the filler of the broken pieces of Nathan role. Only, only somebody of a God caliber could do this. So for me, when it says be still and know that he is God, it's I'm being still and I'm okay with my brokenness. I'm okay with my struggles. I'm okay that I'm not perfect. I'm okay, not because I'm, I, because I'm like, it's, it is okay that I'm broken. Although it is, I know this is really confusing, but if you're walking this walk, you know what I'm talking about. But I'm okay because I know that he is my dad, that I know that he is my husband. I know that he is the one who's attached to me. If I didn't have him, it would not be okay. It never was okay in my life when I didn't have him. Which is a weird sentence because that really only happened for a short period of time. But you know what I mean, when I didn't understand who he was right? Knowing who he was. Know he is the Lord. I know he fills my holes. I know he fills my gaps. I know he fills the cracks of my brokenness. And he completes me utterly. And he is completely full himself. So for me to be still and know that he is the Lord my God is, it's kind of my healing time. It's kind of the time where I get to heal in all of my brokenness. And I get to look past all of my issues. And I get to say, you know, I've been, I've been blessing others. I've been speaking edification onto others. I've been serving others. I've been worshiping. I've been testifying. I've been glorifying you. And now I'm just going to be still and acknowledge that broken me is the one you wanted to marry. And I'm going to just watch you do your magic in this relationship. I'm going to watch you love me. I'm going to watch you love this very broken and very uh, whole filled cup and I'm gonna watch you fill me and then also still be totally perfectly you. That to me is what be still and know that he is the Lord means. Exactly. All right, you guys, I'm going to cut this one from here. I love you very much. 
I know the Lord loves you. I pray that the video today did bless you, that there were things that spoke to your soul, edified you, and strengthened you in Christ, that you may truly be cups that overflow. So I don't want you to just be full. I really, really believe that you are already blessings. I pray that you will just trust. I just, just trust in that, that power of being a blessing in this world, being a light in this world. Take that and enjoy it. Soak it up. Soak up the fact that you have a father, creator, husband that has appointed you with his name, which has all power and authority to give freely as he freely gives to you. Is there a possibly a better creation in this world that we could live in? I know that there is not. That is my testimony today. Be blessed, be the blessing, keep fighting the good fight. I will talk to you soon, and some of you I will see in a few days. I will be back on tomorrow, but it will be super early. I think somebody did the math, and it will be 6 a.m. tomorrow. 6 a.m. tomorrow, California time. Uh, so, yeah, uh, probably around that time, because it'll be around 9 or 10 o'clock tomorrow. So, uh, 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 East Coast time, okay? Uh, so, yeah, I will probably 9 o'clock. It's going to be 9 o'clock East Coast time. So, I think that's 6 a.m. California time. So for those of you watching recorded, that doesn't pertain to you. But I appreciate your patience and for tuning in. And may you also be blessed, my brothers and sisters, in the future. Take care. Talk to you soon.